Hello YouTube. Hope you can hear okay. Hope um, you don't get too much wind noise on the old microphone. Um, I've come up here to this pleasant surroundings to talk about something. I wasn't very comfortable talking about at home with the windows open. And I might touch on something I've never gone into before. We'll see how it goes, how I feel. And yes, this is going to be a long one. So, if you're not relaxed, you might as well just forget it. This is the view from Crouch Hill in Banbury. Um, anyway, where was it? There? So, what I first want to talk about is, um, is our genetics. We have all the genes of all our ancestors within us. Think about that. It almost means that anything they could do, we could do more easily because our genes have already done it. Unless, of course, they evolved after they gave birth to the child. Because we do evolve throughout our lives. We find new abilities to do things and that does affect our genes, I think. And I think we do evolve a bit through our lives. So if you have a kid at 16, then you evolve a bit more and have another kid. That kid, the second kid, is more evolved. Um, you know, perhaps in the old days, perhaps that was noticeable because like people would have like 10 kids and maybe their youngest was maybe they noticed more more sort of talented perhaps determined whatever maybe because of the evolution of the father anyway that aside whatever abilities they had when they gave birth to their offspring the genetics were passed on so you know we could be capable of quite a lot I for example I've started jogging on my toes can't bother to do it now and I wouldn't say it's faster but it's not slower but it's definitely more efficient. You're using your ankles like springs. So I started doing this about a month ago, and my, I bet the wind's fucking it up, sorry. Started doing about a month ago. I put a shield up. And my ankles have, you know, I wouldn't say they've completely got used to it, you know, it's gonna take a bit longer than that. So at the moment my ankles are kind of constantly stiff, but, if I start jogging, you know, they smooth out and I can jog fine. I can do a good few miles, no problem. And um, get more used to it. It, it's to, it seems to be able to run without actually getting that knackered. Which could be good, if you wanted to run a long way. So then, um, I mean, maybe that's not a new thing, but most people, like, hit their hit the floor with their heel and go like that as they run. I'm hitting it with my toe like that. I mean, it is obvious. Ah, up a hill's not very good. Woohoo! You like my girlfriend, aren't you? 
It's my camera is my girlfriend. Um, <laughs> it's been too long. But no, think about that. Think about... You've got all the genes of your ancestors. So that includes when we were monkeys. <clears throat> when we were... When we were like rats. Yeah. We probably quite good at digging. <laughs> we could dig little burrows. I'd like that. Yeah, it'd take a while to make, but once you've made it, it'd be pretty cool, wouldn't it? Have your own burrow. Bring in some straw. Hey, it'd be cosy. Dig some ventilation shafts. Dig yourself a toilet, so you didn't have to go outside. It'd be awesome. Get some food in. Probably shouldn't smoke. Not in there. Maybe you could. Maybe you could uh, work out somewhere to have a fire. Anyway. So this point about the jeans is... No, I'm going to give you another topic which you know I really <coughs> want to get into. If Jesus was let's see, if Mary was impregnated by the Holy Spirit or an angel or God, unlikely. Well, yeah, okay, but let's leave open these possibilities. So if Jesus was a very, very special being indeed, he would have had the genetics of whatever he was fathered by. And if Jesus did have children, which is suspected, Sarah, I believe, may have been the name of his child or something. Maybe he had five. Come on, in those days, he was <clears throat> 30 odd. Why don't we just assume that he did have a few kids, eh? Can we? Is that allowed? So if he did have one or more children, 2,000 years later, there could be thousands of people with the genes of Jesus. And if these genes are superior, they would certainly have been dominant. And this is kind of what I was getting to. Um, I might even call this video Am I Jesus? Question mark. Because what I wanted to tell you about is when I was about 19, <clears throat> I did actually used to, and I'll say, worry that I was Jesus. <laughs> One in a seven billion chance, but it came to my mind. I've also worried that I'm the devil but <clears throat> so there we go you have both sides of the coin and it's actually m very common uh, people don't usually admit to it but they call it messiah complex and I see it like this I see you watching a film and if you see some resemblances between yourself and a film character you might <clears throat> in a sense, while watching that film, put yourself in the position of the character. And so when you're reading stories about Jesus and stuff, you know, you could occasionally put yourself in as that character and imagine what it would have been like. But with what I was talking about earlier, it is possible that some of us have the Jesus gene. But I don't think Jesus was the only 
good person around, because there have been others. And even at the time of Jesus, he said there were the other people um, getting rid of bad spirits and stuff like that. So mm, it's not really such a big deal. And I think the Jesus gene is going to be a black one. I imagine Jesus had chocolate brown skin, um, beard, curly, you know, curly type beard, and big old afro. That's what I think Jesus would look like. Like modern day Ethiopians, I think they look like I imagine the Israelites to look. When I've sort of searched my heart of hearts and tried to have a clear mind. Um, but it's not easy. And I've, I've always had a bit of trouble with Jesus. And when I was reading the New Testament, I thought, you know, one minute it reads one way and then suddenly it sort of changes language, it's all weird and suddenly, you know, he's doing something like walking on water or making water into wine, um, you know. And I think, I think these were more, if anything, they'd be more like parables, like um, the feeding of the 5,000. He always said, you know, uh, like thought is like a food or, you know, love can feed you or, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Perhaps not. Perhaps, you know, it's difficult to explain myself. You know, I do think some deep shit. <laughs> and it's quite hard to get out on camera. And that's why I don't write stuff down, because, you know, if I'm sitting there thinking, and I thought, well, you know, that puts it really well, but then you don't always remember it exactly right. So it's not always so easy to to speak fluently and and make sense all the time and describe it so that absolutely everybody, no matter what they know, can understand. I think probably a lot of my recent stuff, most people are just thinking, I don't know what you're going on about. <clears throat> and I'm, you know, I'm afraid I just don't have time to keep explaining stuff um, so that everybody can understand it. And all I say to you is just, go back to my earlier videos because I don't like repeating myself I know I've said that before <laughs> sun's coming out so yeah I'm feeling quite comfortable to talk about some more personal stuff so I go back to about when I was 19 and this time when I was worrying that I was Jesus. I can't actually remember what made me think I was, except from um, having blonde hair. And the pictures seen of Jesus had blonde hair. So I think that was just, you know, out. But I suppose what I was saying about the genes is, you know, maybe there is some element of, maybe everyone has got a bit of Jesus in them. I mean, if it's, you know, we go on about him being from the throne of David and everything, well then, so are a heck of a lot of other people. And it's just possible that everybody in the world has got a bit of Abraham. <laughs> maybe not everyone in the world, but maybe a lot. You know, throughout my life, I I believe I... I think I started off pretty mean. Um, you know, or maybe I just emulated what other people did, but I would have fights when I was a kid, you know, five or six, lots of fights, seven, eight. And I used to look at kids who... Were just I just looked at them, I thought, you, you just dumb, you're just stupid <laughs> and if if I could I'd pick a fight with them 
But I do remember from quite an early age seeing someone in pain, you know, and they get that face that... And I didn't like that. You know, I didn't like seeing anyone in pain. So I wanted to make him feel better. So I did have that from an early age. And um, stopped fighting around in, when I went to secondary school, 11-ish years old. But mainly because everyone was getting really tall <laughs> and I was staying a shrimp. So then I needed to learn to be nice. Battery okay? Mm -hmm. Still recording? Mm -hmm. So I had, and when I used to go on holiday, I used to pick fights. I used to make someone start on me. I used to like tell them I was younger than I was. I'd look a bit wimpy. And I'd beat them up. And there was one time I went on holiday with my mate Warren in France. And then we're walking next to a busy road. And <clears throat> anyway, I backed down. Backed down from the fight. I was scared. That was the first time, I suppose, that's when it changed. When I was 14, I felt the temptation of the devil. I think I've said this before in a video. I got this feeling that I could make my eyes look really evil. And I could that was like power. I could scare people. But I cast it away quite soon. And that night, I think it was that night, I was laying in bed and I like saw the devil on top of me and I sort of fought him off, get lost. So I suppose, you know, I thought I'd probably got, you know, massive ego. I just thought I was really cool. So I guess, it, you know, big ego. I just thought I was awesome. <laughs> thought I was going to save the world. And, uh,. I was having this dream one night that I was bounding over cobbles with like a pole, like pole vaulting over them. <laughs> and just awesomeness. And my older brother was there in the dream and he looked at me and went, there he is, king of kings. And as he said that, in my mind, I thought, yeah. And then suddenly, it all went black. I was like, transported somewhere else. It was just black, wind, fierce wind, and like, I think rain as well, like, just in a, you know, pretty awful place, windy and rainy. And all I could do was go, <laughs> scared the shit out of me. I managed to wake up by just fighting. Claw black, you know, remember what I was, where I was. <laughs>